Yo guys, this is Scoped, and this is my first Destiny video now. I know this game's been out since, what, September of last year, even before that if you were a part of the Alpha or the Beta, but in this video, I'm going to be soloing a little thing known as Crota Zen now. It's normal mode, not hard mode, so don't know if you can really be, you know, impressed by anything like a lot of people assume people that upload solos or anything like that are. They're not trying to impress you. I'm, at least I'm not, you know, some of the people who upload them soloing raids might be but I think this is pretty neat because this is my uh, my second time doing solo I actually had plans to try to solo Crota's in it's on normal mode as I already mentioned but at the beginning of the video you saw me show you what you know the main loadout I'm going to be running on my I guess blade dance or subclasses I like to run you know the typical just stealth stuff you know like shadow jack to make your stuff last longer the um what is it, Stalker, the thing where you crouch and you go invisible. Uh, sh you know, Path Forbidden, Way of the Drifter, just full agility, and double jump. A lot of people like to do Blink, but I it's kind of always disoriented me a little bit. Now, if you guys want to see more Destiny videos, you know, I'd be happy as hell to make them, because, you know, Destiny is one of the primary games I play right now. And I'd love to do videos of, you know, like, group raids with my friends. Cause at least I'm still trying to get the Black Hammer, and all of them are still trying to get the Allerhorn. You know, funny how Destiny works. Seems people around you all have the gun that you want. Now, the first part of this is the pit. Which is, if you're completely new to Crota, or Destiny in general, Crota's end is a raid, and the first part of the raid, there's a thing called the pit, or the abyss. Now that has lamps in it, and these lamps will get the debuff called the Weight of Darkness off of you, which you'll see here in a second as soon as I, you know, get through this cool little, you know, falling animation, teleporty stuff. It's going to put me at the bottom of the pit. I have to run lamp to lamp while keeping this Weight of Darkness off of me. I mean, you don't have to have it off of you, but it goes by much faster, and it's a higher chance of survival if you get it, you know, around zero. Now the way that I'm doing it is the long way. It's um, it evolves running to each and every lamp, and as you can see here, this lamp I'm running to, there's a little rock to the left of it that if you jump on top of that and you run, I believe, fleet-footed on the Blade Dancer subclass for the Hunter, and I believe if you're on Blink, you can make the jump all the way. You know, just it's like the old cheese, which before, if you're watching this now and you have no idea what the old cheese is, the lamps they turn orange and explode. Now when they explode, they will kill you, but before, they just launched you. So you get on this rock, the lamp explodes, you get launched all the way to the end of the, you know, abyss, the pit. Without, you only have to hit, I th believe, four lamps? You know, maybe not even if you're quick enough. But the way I'm doing it is a long way. It involves running to each individual lamp, stealthing some way, in some way, shape, or form, either crouching, you know, blink striking one of the thrall, getting hit by one of them now. This is a post commentary, so, I'll, you know, obviously, I'm, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to say a little bit toward the end of this, the, uh, the pit, I end up getting in a decent, like, a really sticky situation. And I'm not quite sure how it happened. Basically, toward the end of one of the toward the end of one of the lamps i don't really remember i had to basically activate the you know blade dancer super which is it's the super for the subclass and it lets you i run it with uh the invisibility thing where if, like vanish i believe it's called where if you hit the right trigger you teleport and you're gone when well, you don't teleport you just turn invisible normally you don't have to do that i've you know it, especially on hard mode um i've had a couple of friends who weren't quite 32 and what i would do is i just we would solo the first two parts of the raid because you can the first two parts of the raid are completely broken and you can even you know solo the entire raid on hard mode but when you're doing it with friends it's a lot more easy and fun but i think right there is what i was talking about <laughs> normally you don't have to use your super at all i like to save it for you know the very end of it but this is basically the pit so if you, you know, haven't seen Crow to Zen, or for whatever reason you're here, normally if people look up videos about, oh, this guy's soloing Crow to normal, let's see this, you know, they're gonna think that, they're gonna know how the raid works. 
One thing I do like to do is look back and look at all the thrall. It's so tempting, you know, every time that I look back to look at the thrall and just start, you know, shooting them with the icebreaker. Because any any enemy that dies from the icebreaker will explode. Now, right here, normally I would, you know, go invisible at that lamp to make it up here. But as you see, I have to try to do something a little silly. Since I knew that I wasn't going to have my, you know, uh, stalker invisibility at that lamp, I had to, like, jump on a rock and try to get it. I ended up getting punched, which made me invisible, so. You know, in my head, I'm thinking, wow, this is a really shitty run at the pit. Normally, normally you don't even get to weight of darkness times ten. You know, the highest I think you get is, like, seven or six if you're running from a very long lamp. And another thing out of the ordinary that I did in this is I usually run to the lamp to the right of the plate and then the plate. Now, once you get to the end of the abyss... You stand on that plate, that's going to, I believe it's a one minute timer, minute and a half timer, something like that. It's going to make a bridge form. Now the thing that makes it broken is that you can sit on, you know, this rock right here. Or what I like to do, is wait till you have no weight and then double jump and land on this rock. Either, it doesn't really matter which way you do, but this way seems to attract less thrall under me in case something would go wrong. Which I mean, it's normal mode, so. If you're trying to... You know, solo this on normal mode. You, that ogre you see me shooting at and failing miserably to hit would be hollowed on hard mode. So this part's a lot of... Uh, you don't really try to kill the ogre, as I don't have the black hammer. So what I would do, or what I do do on hard mode when I'm soloing this is... Go invisible. When he appears, then he go, he's going to go behind that rock where I was failing to shoot him. He's going to go around the rock. I go invisible again, and then he should go behind a third rock. Then when he goes behind the third rock, I jump off and cloak my way to the bridge, and it's usually done by then. But this is wrapping up to be about the end of the uh, bridge. As you can see, there's only like one, maybe two thrall under me. Yeah, I think there's only two. But this part is incredibly easy if you're a hunter. Um, you don't. A lot of people think that, oh, you need to be a 32 hunter with don't touch me's and, you know, full agility, shadow jack, everything. You really don't. It can be soloed with any character just because the ogre can be, you know, obliterated on normal mode with, you know, an icebreaker or a black hammer. It doesn't really matter because it dies, I believe, four, three to four shots. But that is the abyss. And let's move on to the next part of the raid. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be talking for the entirety of the raid, because this is post-commentary, and I don't know how long I can keep up about, you know, I'm 20-ish, 28-minute video-ish uh, worth of commentary. So if I ever go quiet and don't speak, that's because I'm waiting for some new part of the raid to pick up. Now, we move on to the second part of the raid, which is the bridge. Now, when you're doing this on normal mode, the I believe... The best way is just to have your entire team... There's three plates. I'm sitting on the middle plate. The three plates have to be held in order to make... Um, well, the middle plate forms a bridge. The other two you have to hold so you don't die because there's totems on it. But on normal mode, it's easier just to have you know three people get on the plates with one person you know killing the sword. Then you get one person across, and they can just hide on the other side while you snipe the ogres. Now, that is not the legitimate way to do it. What I'm doing here, since I'm alone, is you have to do a sword fly. And all of this is completely uh, legitimate in a sense, but not how Bungie wants you to play the game. Normally, if you have a full fire team of six people, you have to form the bridge and get three people across. And then the three people get across on the other side, they form the bridge. Now, this way is just... You can juggle the middle plate, as in like you stand on it and you wait till the totems start like activating then you jump off. You jump on the plate again, then you jump off, but that just takes too much time, and, you know, even though this isn't a speed run by any, any stretch of the imagination, I still just... I'm better with the sword fly than I am trying to juggle the plate, so... For this part, I'm switching over to the trusty Everybody Loves It, the Yallerhorn. Which, a fun story about my Yallerhorn is the one that's 331, I ended up buying from Zur when he sold it. Now I had no idea it was a good yeah, I had no idea it was a good gun by any means. Come to find out, it's one of the most coveted guns in Destiny now. After I bought it from Zur, I ended up getting one from Atheon hard mode about, you know, I wanna say four to five weeks ago. And I believe two weeks ago I got another one from the Gorgon chest. So I dismantled the one I got from Atheon thinking, oh I'm never gonna get another one, because it's you know such a rare weapon. 
But now I'm kind of sad that I did dismantle it because I have three characters, and having one on all three characters would be, you know, it just saves vault space and, you know, switching your gun between all three characters. Now I got out the Allerhorn, or the Gatlahorn, for um, the ogres right here. Now the strategy that I was using is I'm going to use all of the rockets on one, all minus one on the right side ogre where I'm standing now. I'm going to shoot the last one at this guy. I'm going to run, hide, you know, blink, strike, go invisible, so I'm going to switch my guns without getting destroyed. And I'm going to switch over to the icebreaker. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because I believe I took a synth, so... You can keep your distance from this ogre for, you know, the entirety of, like, your time killing it, so... Getting out the icebreaker, it takes, I want to say, seven, eight shots from the icebreaker to do anything. So, the icebreaker, I feel like, for this part, saves heavy and is a little bit less, uh, you know, risky to keep your distance. But once those two ogres are dead, that's kind of the whole checkpoint for the raid, or not the raid, the, you know, bridge, you can see the wizard despawning, so... We'll get on to the next part, which it's not really a part, it's like a mini part, which is the Shrieker chest now. Normally, the thing that I do with the Shrieker chest over here is I will, you know, wait for it to spawn, snipe the first one, then I get up to a little spot with my rocket launcher, and I, you know, rocket the second one, and then you, because there's two Shriekers, they each have a little invisible glass window that you can, that'll prevent you from going through. So you need to take out the Shriekers. First Shrieker gets rid of the first one, second one gets rid of the second one, as you can, you know, put two and two together. Now right here is a bit of a fail. Normally you shoot one rocket, shoot the second one, now I pre-jacked. <laughs> as you can see, I'm just standing here like, oh shit. But I shot the first one and I, you know, I messed up on the timing because I thought I shot the second one, because normally what I'll do is, you know, shoot the two rockets at the second one, activate my super, go invisible. And then run through and normally you can get to the chest door that way alone but me being the retard i am completely messed it up but it's still salvageable you just can't get to the shrieker chest which let's be honest just gives you two shards of energy anyway so who even wants it unless you're not 32. but right here you just jump over their little blasts you know punch a thrall so you can go invisible and then you just sneak your way through it really not that hard i think it's kind of weird that this entire raid can be soloed by a hunter which i mean the hunter is you know, the best class, as many people think. But it's it's cool in a way, too, because the Vault of Glass, you can't really, you know, solo, because there's so many instances where you need more than one person, like the Conflexes, like, maybe you can solo it if you're really lucky and you do the heavy ammo properly. Now, here, you see the magic of editing, I skipped, you know, the three failed attempts I had, because my controller kept dying and I couldn't... <laughs> Yeah, that great excuse. No, my controller kept dying, and I couldn't find my... I have the play and charge kit, so I couldn't find the little, like, plug-in. But I ended up finding it, and I think I messed up another time because I killed myself by hitting one of the chains like the genius I am. But this is how I run it on solo mode. Or solo mode. How I run it on normal mode when I'm doing it solo. Now, this is probably a pretty fast way to do it, you know, with a team if they both have, you know, Yaller Horns slash Gatler Horns. Because they can just sit in the room and take out both sides easy, and you can run in and just gank your Ute in, you know, 15 seconds. It's This whole part is, you know, you can get down really quickly, but the strategy I'm employing, I believe, is one that I saw from... Uh, SC Slayridge? At least that's the first person I saw do it. I don't know if he's the one to credit for it, but basically what he did is he takes out, you know, both wizards in here. Takes out both wizards and the Shrieker at the same time, then he escapes. Now, he had the Black Hammer, which I do not have, so I have to run out here, escape death. You know, I crouch, but then I realize, oh shit, I'm getting shot, because sometimes they shoot at me and sometimes they don't. So, fire off my last Yaller Horn because the strategy I have it doesn't involve me shooting rockets at her. So you switch over to the Hunger, switch to the Icebreaker. And basically, if you don't aggro any of her shots on you, she does not move. Now, if she doesn't move, you can get on top of this little... don't know if it's a doorway. It's just like little just platform you can land on and you can sit there and the whole time she's singing you can shoot her in the face it takes seven icebreaker shots and by the time you get through six precision hit seven icebreaker shots to the chest or head maybe i might do but the first as soon as you get done with the first six the seventh one should spawn now as you can see i'm kind of peeking around making sure she's there i try not to aggro her fire but 
if you haven't done this entire thing before, basically, one of the more annoying parts of the raid, because, like, there is a way to, um, force the checkpoint to the next one, but the way that I do it is I just believe I speed up all of the, uh, either speed up or cut out all of the bullcrap. Anyways, you see I'm going invisible to make sure she's staying in her place. But this raid, or this part of the raid is done by... As soon as you enter in, it says the dusting repairs her song. Now, you have to kill wizards and shriekers. Now, in a normal raid, you know, with six people, they split up and have two teams of three go on each side, then one person from each team will run in, pull out each wizard, they'll run out. Then they'll just sit there and shoot the wizard. Now, me being the great shot I am, I miss here, so my bad. I'm trying to dodge uh, acolyte shots at the same time. So as you can see, not too hard. Now with, um, back again to the normal way of doing it, you'll have, you know, the two people from each side shoot the wizard, the one person who's bringing it out, then you'll have, what I like to do is I'll go to the right side and just stealth in, take out the, the uh, shrieker on that right side, and then run over to the left side, and usually by then both side shriekers are down. And then we just kill all of the hollowed enemies, like the knights and all that stuff, and get rid of that. So, this is where the annoying part comes in. For the checkpoint, you have to kill a lot of enemies. Now, another strut from SC Slayerage, he kills all of the, um, like, he kills all of the adds outside, and then he kills a certain amount of ones inside, and then a sword knight on the outside kills him and triggers the checkpoint without the checkpoint actually happening. Unfortunately, I'm not smart enough, nor do I know how to do that, so I'm doing it the long way, and for the sake of, you know, time, I'm going to edit this out. So I'll see you guys when the raid, or when the final part of the raid, final part, final part of the raid actually starts. So, see you guys then. Alright guys, so as you can see, checkpoint hits after you kill a certain amount of enemies, and this is where I'm switching over to my Crotify gear, which is the Feybringer, uh, Swordbreaker, and the Yallerhorn slash Gatlerhorn, depending on which kind of person you are, because it's pronounced both ways, but through the magic of editing, I, met, or I cut out all of the failed attempts of me fighting Crota, and here we are. Now, there's a strategy that you can do that involves blinking through the window pane that spawns. I've done it a few times, but not in this time. Not to this time, sadly, so. I'm just gonna switch over to the standard layout. I switched to, um, I believe Arc Blade it is. Um, it's the one that lets you RT through, uh, RT, it's Razor's Edge, my bad. If you're on Xbox, you RT and you can launch these little electric waves through the ground and that can kill off a bunch of the Acolytes. If you're fast, you can get both sides killed, but this is currently being recorded. This live com, or not live com, I'm a dumbass. This commentary is currently being recorded at 5 in the morning. So, as you can see, didn't get all the acolytes killed because I'm not the most aware at the moment. It's actually a miracle that I even managed to get this entire thing completed. Anyways, for this part, you have to kill both. You don't have to kill both sides of enemies, but it's, you know, it's advised because they will chase out and kill you. Now, for Crota, basically you see the presence of Crota debuff, that means you don't get your health back. Unless you're holding, on normal mode, something called the Chalice, and if it's on hard mode, it's not even there. And you have to use guns, such as the Red Death and the Suros Regime, or your Mask of the Third Man Helmet on your Hunter, which is my personal favorite way of getting your health back, to get your health back. Anyways, on normal mode, you're going to run down here, grab the Chalice. Now, I like to do this strat on normal mode with the full teams, you stay down here and just kill the sword bearer yourself. It's just a, you know, lets you get them down quickly. Always take out Curse Thrall if you're down here because I've fucked up so many, like, attempts because of Curse Thrall. Now, right here, got a little furry. I thought for sure this raid was going to be, you know, there's going to be a wipe, but through the magic of my, you know, A button, I managed to escape all of those Thrall. So, the you can do, uh, you can get them all, like, killed in one sword if you're, you know, magical but I'm not magical, so it takes me two. Basically, I'm going to the right rock, downing him, three swiping him, you know, I drop the sword on Crota, I escape. I like to drop the sword on Crota because I don't, like, trust myself to really drop it anywhere else. At least I haven't really got practice with it, so. I barely get the third smack in here before escaping. You know, I'm losing my health, take a fall, that didn't really help, because, you know, it's not smart to take falling damage while your health is low. But after you down Crota, he's going to run to the right or the left, depending on 
Well, actually, it's not even a matter if you down him. He, he starts off in the center, then he rotates to the right, middle, left, middle, right, middle, and then he's pissed. And the goal of this is to get him, you know, killed before he gets pissed slash enraged. Now, on hard mode, he gets auto-enraged when he has, like, 15% health or so. At least that's the number of people throw around. But on this mode here, it doesn't get mad unless you hit a certain time limit, so, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Now my strategy for taking out this, or for you know taking out the sword, I want to make sure he's, you know, he's gonna see me looking at Crota. Crota's gonna run back to the center. I want to make sure the sword is on the other side. So I'm trying to take out as many throws as I can, and then try to I get the timing down to where, as I'm going across, Crota is you know running back to the center. As you can see, I'm trying to keep him in my screen so I can see if he's going across. I see he is going across. So this is when I turn around. I notice that I have five rockets, so I shoot. I can afford to shoot one. You know, that kind of brings him over here and toward me and does a good amount of damage. So another kind of, you know, fuck up I did is that missed the re missed the thing. I went to reload my rocket, didn't reload it in time and picked up the sword. So, you know, if it's not a speed run, but it still works. It's kind of a, you know, a, you know, mess up part of mine. Right here, I'm slipping off the rock, which I end up doing twice. So I get my, you know, three smacks. I drop that. Right here, I thought I was going to die just because there's boomers facing me and... I have very little health. So I'm trying to like procrastinate hitting Crota with the rocket as much as possible because I don't want to die. And I finally do hit him with, you know, the two smacks. It's three, 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 two. In terms of how many smacks it takes to down him in four swords. Anyways, that is me soloing Crota on normal mode. Not the most impressive thing, but it was still neat. And I think that, you know, some of you might enjoy seeing it. So. Oh man, this has been a long commentary. So if you guys want to see more videos, you know, mainly of Destiny, just tell me in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.